Hi, Bill. I have a hey, question Jane. for you. Sure. It's, uh, it's not necessarily on a specific issue. We've been hearing some really important points of where you stand in the spectrum of issues. Um, but for me, the elephant that's in the room on uh, Facebook and on the social media that I'm heavily advocating for you, I'll come right out and say because I think that you're the right guy at the right time for the right job. Uh, there's this theme out there that I think would be helpful to be addressed and if you could speak to it. And that is the theme that somehow uh, if the Republicans vote you in as Speaker of the House, it's going to be uh, a bad election season in 2016 because, you know, it will mess up all the elections. And I am hearing it throughout the spectrum. It's a talking point to me that seems Democrat, fr frankly, and, they, and that we sort of picked up the talking point, and now we're talking like it's truth. So um, I've had a lot of people that are friends with me that have asked me this specific thing. They've asked me who, who I'm standing with, and then they bring up that point. So speak to that point and, you know, clear it up, because I think it's such, uh, it's disingenuous information that needs to be cleared well, it's, up. Well, it's not factual. Um, if you looked at the vote in 2012 that Republican House candidates receive cumulatively, it was 50.11% of all votes cast for representatives. Now, there was a supermajority. We, we got a majority. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there was a supermajority in Republican towns. But throughout the state, we were able to get a majority. I contrast that with um, Ovid Lamontagne's uh, uh, campaign, which got a little bit over 43 percent mm -hmm. of the vote, or Governor Romney's presidential campaign that received um, 47, 48 percent of the vote. Um, we consistently, even though we're the most conservative element um, in the Republican Party and our campaign, or populated more often by conservatives than what we see above us on the ballot, get the stronger vote. We saw it again in this election that we just completed. I understand, 60% of um, all votes that were cast for representatives this past time were cast for Republicans. Um, and that's after they went after me um, by putting mailers into every district saying, um, you vote for these reps, and you will be voting for the O'Brien uh, Koch brothers agenda. They only didn't do it in one one uh, district. In my district, they said O'Brien's going to vote for the Koch brother <laughs> agenda, oh. which which got me kind of upset because apparently the Koch brothers are freelancing in my district and yeah. and they have their own agenda, not my agenda. Um, but but um, so. In all seriousness, what we find is that it's the top of the ballot that's underperforming. Mm -hmm. We have a history in this party of assuming that if we choose moderates, that if we choose those who aren't assertive in the Republican philosophy, that somehow we're going to do better as a party. And, and yet we ignore history and we, we ignore results of recent election. I grew up substantially in Massachusetts. My dad was in the service, and he came back because he was at, you know, assigned in Boston for a while, and then he went off to Vietnam, and, and that's where I went to, uh, to high school. And, and uh, I, when I first moved into the town of Framingham, we had a Republican representative. And, and over the years that I was there, high school, then I stayed for college, stayed for law school, I watched the Republican Party in, in Massachusetts drift away. And, and one of the hallmarks of it is that they always thought, well, we have to look act a little bit like Democrats. And whatever issues they have, we have those issues too, but we're more responsible. And we feel bad when we raise taxes. We don't raise them quite enough. They, they, you know, there was no true distinction between the, the parties. It was just a matter of degree. Um, when we provide that distinction, we're a successful party. When we give people the choice of limited government and individual sovereignty and fiscal responsibility and low taxes, 
people respond to it well because they understand that that's the American philosophy. That's the philosophy on, upon which this country was founded. It wasn't founded on European socialist policies of big government looking for an eventual utopia, just keep on legislating until we find it. It was founded on, on a government that that um, assumes uh, or something the Democrats do, that there is this area where individuals are sovereign. And, and people respond to that well, and yet the, the elites don't. <coughs> And, and so what, what I, I, I reject that understanding, it's erroneous, and moreover, it's offensive. What it's basically saying is that the Democrat Party leadership can run conservatives out of public life yep. in New Hampshire, because that's what they're trying to do. Right. They're trying to run me out of public life. Mm -hmm. and, and in the end, you know, my colleagues will, will uh, vote on, on uh, next Tuesday, on November 18th, as to whether or not they were successful in doing it. But let there be mo no mistake, that's what they're trying to do. So this, this vote on the, tw on the 18th will be at the State House? It will be at and the State House. And can we go up to the gallery and watch the vote? Uh, no, it's a caucus. It's a caucus? Um, what we're trying to do is um, uh, arrange a, a debate or a question and answer period. Um, uh, I met with the party um, chair yesterday. We traditionally have one. For some reason, they don't want to have one. Really? And so um, we're going to, um, I'm going to invite my, my uh, fellow candidates to attend one. We're going to try to set one up. Um, unless, as a result of them seeing us do that, they you know, quickly jump in and have it happen. But um, so that, that would be, you know, something that, that certainly um, the public could attend. Actually, I, I must say, until November 18th, you're, you're still a state rep, so I don't know. No, I had to leave my seat because I moved. Oh, that's right. I forgot that. Dream. I would have loved to have still been there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm in hooks it now. So, but yeah, uh, that's right. So I've forgotten that. we can. What time is the vote? So one thirty, we go into caucus. Okay, good to know. Well, I think you're the right guy. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure that people know that you need to be in that speakership because this election was a mandate to get something done despite what anyone says. And we need to have someone up there at the gavel that knows how to do it. And, and that's an important thing. Well, I, th I think it is important because um, I will you know, get something done. I think um, certainly when um, I sit in a, a committee of conference with Jeb Bradley and and Chuck Morris, um, I've dealt with them f before, and they, they know that I won't budge on principles, you know, and that was very successful in allowing us to get rid of that deficit mm -hmm. without any new taxes, new fees, or anything. Um, and when I sit with Maggie Hassan, I understand, I think she understands that um, there is um, a principled opposition here, not an expedience opposition, and that I'm not one of those people that go along to get along. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm not, you know, w one of my opponents is looking over his shoulder thinking, how do I get to be governor someday, you know, and the other one is just, oh, I, I got to be vindicated, I got to get back to be speaker at some point, yeah. um, because I once was and I, I had to leave it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I'm there because, you know, quite frankly, I want this state to be a place that I can ask my children to return to. My children have left for jobs. And it's because, although we look affluent in New Hampshire, it's because we're old. We're, we're one of the yeah, oldest older. states, and old, old people are more affluent. Yeah. We're not growing jobs. Our right. young people are leaving. People are working hard. Pe working um, people are working harder and getting less. They're falling behind, and it's all because we are not growing this economy. Mm -hmm. When, when we, we should be shocked. There should, they, they, there, sh there should at this point be embarrassment on, on those who have been in government when we look to Rhode Island and Massachusetts and say they're growing faster than we're growing. That's sad to say. But it's not the New Hampshire I, I moved up to. It's not the New Hampshire when I was a, a kid in, in Massachusetts going to high school and everybody would say it was like a, a standing on standing. You have a business, you move it to New Hampshire if you can. Uh -huh. um, now you don't. Mm -hmm. Rock TV.